Hi, today I am going to take a quick look at a block plan, a Luban Rabbiting block plan. Before we get into that though, I should stress that this is not a paid review. This is something I've bought and it's also not going to be a review. This is going to be a quick look at it as it's difficult to review tools and machinery if you haven't had sufficient time to use them and find if there are any flaws or things that don't work in your workflow. With that said, uh, before we get looking at the plane, I'm going to tell you how I ended up at this plane rather than a different brand. It is generally recognised that pre-World War II Stanley and Record are pretty awesome. Um, Post-World War II the quality dropped and brands like Stanley and Record, now Irwin, produce planes that aren't really worth the price. Uh, they're not necessarily flat, they're not necessarily well made, uh, and often just don't perform how the brand really should or used to perform. So it is quite common for people to have a whole horde of pre-World War II planes that they've restored, bought at a flea market for not very much, and that way you can get quite a lot of uh, hand tools for not very much money. Unfortunately, the popularity of these pre-World War II planes has meant that they are starting to get a little bit expensive. I know I've seen many planes in, uh, from America that the planes are getting worse and worse quality. So they're more rusted, more pitted, broken, whatever. But people are charging more and more because there's either collectors or there's people wanting to use them and not pay very much. And so there's suddenly a market, so the prices have been skyrocketing. In Australia, I think you'd struggle to find pre-World War II planes. Most of what you find at junk markets and on eBay are not great. They're very rusted, they're in poor condition, um, and often they're the more recent planes that have the plastic handles and all those other bits and pieces that aren't overly desirable. So it gets to a point where you can pay $50, $100, dollars for a second-hand plane that still requires all the rust to be removed. Everything has to be reflattened. Uh, in the case of the chip breakers, you need to fed all them down so they actually sit, seat properly, which can be quite a bit of an effort. And, and it's a lot of work. So you might spend you know, 10 hours restoring a plane that you've spent $150 on. And suddenly the value proposition isn't quite there. There are two plane makers that come to mind for high-end planes that uh, either match or exceed the old Stanley planes. Those are Lee Nielsen and Veritas. Unfortunately, both those brands are quite expensive. Certainly in Australia, they are very expensive planes. Uh, this Luban plane was $109, I believe. In Australia, to get the equivalent Lee Nielsen or Veritas, you're looking at just under triple the price of the Lee Nielsen at at uh, 275 I believe and the Veritas one comes in about 250 so you're paying a lot of money for not a lot more so Luban not many people may have heard of that brand uh, they're I suppose the model line of a company called Quenching I'm not sure of the pronunciation um, which as the name might imply is a Chinese made plane while that might not sell many people on the plane. They are also rebranded under a few different names including Wood River in North America and Wood River is generally considered a very excellent uh, value for money option between the bargain secondhand planes that you have to do all the work on and the higher end Veritas and Lee Valley, um, Lee Nielsen. With that all said let's take a closer look at this particular plane. As I mentioned this is a rabbiting block plane. Uh, rabbiting in this case means that it's got the open gullets or openings there and the blade extends all the way to the edge of the body which lets you rabbit things. This is compared to a more traditional block plane which the blade doesn't go quite all the way. So one of the reasons I bought this plane is this is my existing block plane which as you can see is quite a bit longer. Interestingly the weight is about the same between the two. This particular Stanley block plane, the number 130, doesn't really have an adjustment mechanism. You loosen it, loosen the lever cap like that, and you slide it back and forth. It can be very fiddly to get a good result. In contrast, the Luban, you can still loosen that, 
but then you've got the, I believe it's the Norris style adjuster to bring the blade back and forth so that it's easier to adjust. Now, out of the very uninteresting box, the plane comes set up uh, and covered in grease, so you'll need to disassemble that. Clean it, I use a citrus cleaner degreaser. Uh, and the blade is sharp enough to take some shavings, but like with most planes other than the very highest end, you'll need to do some final honing. Out of the box, the, the sole of the plane seems pretty flat. The back of the blade seems fairly flat. So I'll disassemble everything and we can take a closer look. If we put the blade and cap to a side for a moment, uh, feeling around these edges, there's no sharp edges. They've all been broken which is great, which means that you're not going to cut yourself on it. The overall fit and finish is pretty good. They're using the adjuster here with the blade in it, obviously. There's very little slack, and that can be shown by having a look at how much or how little room there is in that slot there. If that was larger, uh, there'd be more slack between advancing and retracting the blade. On the bottom, I have some scratches, which I believe was actually from the uh, red gun uh, I attacked with at first, so kind of ignore those. It may just be superficial, I haven't really investigated. Uh, getting back onto sharp edges, other than here, the mouth opening, and maybe these edges, which need to be square, nothing is particularly sharp, and that is a good thing. The paint on it is nice, it's fairly smooth, and even coverage, no globs, uh, and the brass knurled knobs feel great. Uh, there's a nice detent here. So let's look at the blade. Uh, it's a fairly common T-style blade, common for uh, rabbiting planes that is, um, with nothing more than the Luban logo etched into it. It's not engraved in deeper than that. Uh, the back is relatively flat. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, you might just have to take my word for it. Uh, and we haven't done any particular flattening of that, so I'll grab my stone out. You can see that, oh, right up to the edge is um, now shiny, so those were the high spots. So perhaps slightly scalloped out like that, which is not necessarily a bad thing as it means that it won't stop the plane from seating properly. Looking at the bevel, uh, you can see that we're starting to get a nice mirror shine. I'll get a nice close up of that. Um, though we haven't spent a lot of time working on it. Out of the box, it came at pretty much bang on 25 degrees, which is what we're wanting sharpen it at. This is a low angle plane, so that uh, angle plus the angle of the bed is the actual angle that you're cutting at. I mentioned that these are the same as the Wood River planes, and that is almost entirely true. Obviously they would have Wood River branding on them, uh, but the one area where Wood River planes apparently differ is the blades themselves. And they are, I believe it's A2 steel blades. I'm not sure what this is. I'll put a link to the specs in the description below. Um, when, if I do a review on these, I'll go into more of a breakdown on whether these blades are suffice or not. If Luban produce a rabbiting block plane for Wood River, you can get that replacement blade for this quite easily. I found that uh, assembling these can be a little tricky as there is no edges to nicely square up the blade. Easiest way is to squeeze the two edges of the blade and then it should uh, be relatively straight. So probably the most important question other than price is, does this actually perform? Uh, now remember, this is not as sharp as it could be as we have just not spent the time to sharpen it properly. What I'm finding uh, is that despite being quite a small plane, it is very heavy and I'm finding that is one of the advantages of metal planes is that that extra weight allows me to apply the effort more correctly and I can get a pretty good shaving. So not quite thin enough to see the text on camera but I can just see through that. And this is uh, some fairly rubbish construction grade pine. So 
hopefully you can see that, perhaps not, I might need to take a photo, but the text is on the ruler is actually visible through the shaving. So while that's not an indication of much, the blade is able to take uh, a relatively sharp edge. One of the reasons we got a rabbiting block plane rather than a standard block plane is for cleaning up things like shoulders of tenons or rebates or half laps, that sort of stuff. With a regular block plane, the blade doesn't go right to the edge, so there's no way you can clean up all of a tenon, you'd end up leaving a shoulder on a shoulder. So as I said, this is not a review, this is more of a preview, I suppose, a first look at. Uh, there may be issues that arise down the track, uh, and whether the blade retains its edge very long, how difficult it is to sharpen compared to other blades, that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan of the weight, the look and the finish on it. it everything feels pretty good in hand, having my palm on this uh, cap iron, I guess, uh, and finger or thumb in there is very comfortable. Uh, one thing I'm not a massive fan on is the very narrow mouth opening. Now, I don't know if that's actually gonna be an issue, but it does mean that I can't hog out very much material at a time with a block plane. That being said, not really designed to be hogging out a lot of material, more for a touch up finishing type thing. And if I do need to hog out a lot of material, particularly in a rabbit, I have this uh, record uh, number 78 plane, which is a rabbiting philister plane, which is designed to hog out a lot of material. Uh, I picked mine up from Fine Tools Australia. Um, I have no association with them, but I found that Jason over at Fine Tools was very helpful and quick to respond to emails. So shout out to those guys. Uh, they've got a range of planes. I've got a number four and a low angle jack on order. Uh, they have sold out of a lot of their stuff, but they have a shipment on the way, uh, which should be arriving hopefully quite shortly. Um, they also have a range of, well, sorry, they have mini Quangsheng planes, some wooden bodied ones, which I guess come from another manufacturer. And they have a range of the Checkmade uh, Narex chisels which they're quite interesting. While I do like my new, newly handled Aldi chisels, um, the Czech ones, the, sorry, the Narex chisels are highly regarded. So I'd be interested in picking up some of their mortising chisels to see how they go. At the moment, I'm not doing a lot of mortising by hand, so it's not a high rush, but it's certainly something I'll be looking into in the future. Thanks for watching.